from the show that is always on your side. This is Eye to Eye, Kansas City. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us here on our Decision 2014 after the, uh, yeah, after the election program. So much time has went into prepping you for the midterm election. Now, what is the midterm election all about? Well, the makeup of the Senate and the House. Now, there's been a lot of talk about how the uh, Republicans might be taking over the House and the Senate. And there's like, I believe, six votes for the Republicans to take it over from the Democrats. But uh, one local race that we're taking a look at is the Greg Orman race and the Pat Roberts race in Kansas. Now that has been kind of neck and neck, but we won't have the results for that election. You'll probably hear it, but we will let you know on another edition or a regular edition of I to I Kansas City. But today here on I to I Kansas City, we are going to have those results of the issues and the candidates of the uh, from the Missouri midterm ballot in here in Kansas City. We're going to show you how Kansas City voted on some, on these uh, issues and candidates here in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at some of the some of the uh, low vote. Uh, excuse me. Let's take a look at some of the uh, voter turnout projections. Now, with Kansas City. Kansas City is projected to have a low voter turnout with a little bit of 40% of the vote. Kansas is a little bit higher, 10% more, with 50% uh, uh, with higher with the voter turnout. Now, with some, there has been some issues all across the nation, and even to include here in Kansas and Missouri, uh, technical issues with electronic voting machines and so forth. Uh, there's been an issue where you may or may not take the ballot or you may not be able to select some uh, options on the ballot, on the electronic ballot itself. There's a lot of issues and what we've been getting a lot of emails about on, on the election day itself was that people were kind of hostile with the election, uh, with the process of getting uh, uh, their ballots and so forth. What I encourage you to do is to re is to report that to your local election board or to your local uh, election authorities, and they will take care of that for you. And you, it's just one of those things that you just have to be patient with. And I know it's not always easy to deal with, but please do so. Please get your uh, votes if you haven't already. By the time you see this, is no no news for you. But just to remind you for future elections and so forth, if you're having problems with your electronic ballot, please notify a poll worker so that way they can get someone in or with more expertise or they can get you a paper ballot and that won't count. I mean, that will count as your vote and they will get rid of that or whatever you, whatever they want to work it within their process. What's going on at this time is that uh, here in Missouri, gay marriage is deemed unconstitutional. That decision was made federally, and that decision was also backed up with the Missouri Western, with the Western Missouri courts. So, what is going on here in Jackson County? Well, what we've know of, and what has been getting out, is that uh, uh, li uh, marriage licenses will be issued. Um, that that has been the, that has been the. Uh, the outcause of this particular decision. Uh, what we are finding out is that the Missouri Attorney General, Chris Coster, will be uh, appealing this particular decision and he says that uh, it just doesn't fit with state law. And state law uh, has, has uh, qualities of marriage between a man and a woman. So we will have the latest of this, but uh, as of right now, both St. Louis County and Jackson County have uh, uh, has that uh, marriage ban, the same-sex marriage ban, uh, deemed unconstitutional. So marriage licenses will be issued in both, I believe, in uh, St. Louis County. But what we have confirmed is that uh, it's here in Jackson County, Missouri. 
those who want to get married will be able to do so with and have a marriage license to signify that unity. So we will have the latest on another edition of Eye to Eye, Kansas City. Now we will return to our show at question, which is the, uh, let's talk about questions one and two real, real quickly in the correlation to Clay Chastain, the man that we continuously talk about here on this program for some odd reason. <laughs> Did I write this one? Okay. Uh, but we are finding out that questions one and two that were on the November 4th ballot are related to Clay Chastain's uh, plans for expanding a light rail here in Kansas City. Now, the light rail and the Kansas City streetcar are two different entities. Now, the streetcar is streetcar construction rather has already began and it's already starting from uh, the city market all the way down to uh, uh, Union Station. Is, is the, that's pretty much the uh, plan there already in progress but what Clay Chastain is what you've seen on the uh, the language on the ballot you can reference the, the before the election special um, on those items because we will not have a lot of time to do so on this program so that is what is going on with that uh, particular uh, situation is that those two questions were basically uh, Clay Chastain's bones of uh, of him asking for light rail, but he wanted that question to fail, and he says that he wants to uh, run for mayor. And with him running for mayor, he would place his own language on the ballot and ask ask Kansas City voters to vote on it. What a bunch of baloney! I had to kind of censor that one because you know I want to say something else on this Sunday. Something's crazy, huh? All right, so that's all we got for that one, and that's all we're going to have for that one as of right now. But we will keep you monitored on the latest developments on, uh, on both the, uh, the unconstitutional ban uh, ruling uh, and the questions one and two uh, uh, relation to Clay Chastain, uh, the activist that is working everyone's nerves here in the city. But let's get on with the election results as they come in. And we're going to start off here in Missouri. Now, for constitutional amendment number two, the yes vote was a one uh, was a seventy one point ninety six vote. For constitutional amendment number three, it took a no vote of one of uh, seventy six point forty four. For constitutional six, it took a no vote as well with 70.33 percent of that vote and for constitutional amendment number 10 it has took a 56.80 uh, percentage vote so those, that's how that has took place now let's take a look at what at, uh, Kansas City has voted on in terms of questions one and two for questions one and two, for question one, let's start off with question one. It has a no vote of 70.49%. And for question two, has that same no vote at a 60.87 uh, percentage points on those things. I think people took uh, the uh, heed of those things and, and really understood that it really didn't mean any help to the city to pass those things. Okay, now let's take a look at some of our uh, candidates here on the program. Then we're going to take a few of them, I believe. So, state rep for uh, U.S. Do we have the U.S.? Okay, we're going to start off with the U.S. Representative District 5 race. And Emmanuel Cleaver held on to his seat with a 51.55% for Jackson County. But here in Kansas City, it took a little bit of a high vote as well. Now, let's move on to some of the state representative seats. And for District... district uh, uh, 
Uh, starting off with District 19, uh, uh, John Joseph Rizzo took to, uh, onto his seat. Brandon Allenton for District 22 holds onto his seat with 100% of the votes. Randy D. Dunn also holds on with 100% of those votes. Jeremy Lafaber also holds on with 100% of those votes. Gail McCain Betty holds on with 100% of those votes for District 26. Bonet V. Mims for District 27 holds on for those votes with a 100% vote. Uh, Tom McDonald for 28. District 28 has a 100% of the vote, so he's back in. For Republican, it was a Republican turnover for uh, this state representative, District 29. Uh, Noel Torpe took the vote with 61, uh, was 61, 01% of the vote. Mike Sirport took with 100% of the votes for District 30 and craziness today. So, and uh, so we pretty much covered it as I'm getting confirmation. Now, State Auditor Tom Sedwich took the lead, which was the Republican candidate. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Took the lead with 73.32. Thank you. Uh, so that took that. Uh, let's take a look at. <coughs> Excuse me. This is why I don't like this system because it doesn't pull up anything. Okay, we're going to switch back. Excuse me. It's not popping up yet. We're having a technical difficulty. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, about this because sometimes this system likes to. Okay, for Jackson County Executive, uh, B. Uh, Sanders hails on with a 76.13 uh, point. Uh, let me start this over. He holds on with a 76.13. Percentage of the votes for county executive and Frank Wright took uh, the lead for uh, county at large seat, uh, district one seat, with 82.19. So the former uh, Royals player takes that particular seat. So those are the big races that we've kept our eye on, and that was what took place there. All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back here on I to I, Kansas City. And when we come back, I will have a uh, lot of my fun. City, seen on KC Online Television on YouTube.com. Grocer, Price Chopper, Casey Pride lives here.
All right, everybody, let's take a look at the overall voter turnout of what has took place for uh, Kansas City and what we've got for Jackson County. I don't know if this is the official one, so we won't give out Jackson County at this time around. But for registered voters, there was 215,300. 57, which gave a low voter turnout of 25.87. There was 55,713 cards that were casted. So this was a low voter turnout, and most of this has been reported. This is what we've gotten. This is what we are dealing with right now. So, as I said, and as many of those that have, and as we brought you the, uh, voter turnout uh, prediction in the uh, beforehand uh, at the earliest of our show. This is what we're looking at. This is the actual facts here for uh, Kansas City. But for Kansas, it was a different story. And as we predicted with Kansas, it was a bit higher. So that is what took place in Kansas. Significantly higher. I think it was at uh, 50 or 40, 40 to 50 percent of the vote. But as we know, and as everyone knows after election night, is that the Republicans are taking over the Senate. It is overthrowing the Democratic control and bringing in more sea of red than blue. And could this cause a big friction in the White House? I do believe so. And the reason why that is because looking back at 2010, when you see the Tea Party folks coming in, those candidates there, they was not about to do any work for America. So they talk about, oh, we're working hard for America, and da 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 da. But here's my problem with the Republicans and going on from now to 2016. Now they're, now they're trying to get the black vote. And the black vote has to be precious for them, I guess. But they should have been thinking about that long years ago. A long, long, long time. And I'm not saying uh, Democrats are even better, because certainly there are some that are not. And there are some that do care about the black community and about the black vote. And there are some that really don't care and are out of touch and just want the vote for the sake of having the vote. And, of course, this is, this is the problem that I have. <laughs> Why now? Are you trying to connect, excuse me, why now are you trying to connect with black folks? Why now are you trying to make that correlation? Now there are some black candidates that were Republican that have took, that have overthrown some Democrats out of that seat. And for the first time, I am going to say I'm thoroughly impressed because now it shows that the Republicans are trying to make some kind of move towards 2016. And I think 2016 might be their year. Now, if Jared Bush comes in there, I don't know, because I think I, uh, people need to understand that you need, we've done had enough of Bushes, the Bush family. We need someone that is different, and we need someone that is going to be, if they're if we're clearly going in the Republican direction, if Hillary Clinton comes in there, it is going to be something to really be looking at. And I don't know if that's a good thing, or if that's a bad thing, or if that's going to be something that is going to really affect the race, but it's going to be an interesting race if there is a bush in it. We'll be looking out for that, and of course, we will be looking at a lot of things.